I'm going to try to set up a premise here uh, for absolute value, just to wrap our head around what absolute value is. So we're going to look at equations for review. We've already done it, but we're going to review it, and then we're going to look at absolute value inequalities. So here is a picture. Okay, this is, this is you. Okay. It looks like you're standing on boats, but this is ice skates, okay? And you're skating this direction. 20 feet per second. All right? And here's your friend who is 100 feet away. And I want to know how many seconds until you are 60 feet away from your friend? How many seconds until you're 60 feet? Feet away from your friend, take a minute, let's do it too. So Lee is talking about two possible answers. Let me get it, let me change the color here. So 20 feet per second, if you want to be 60 feet away, right? How far would you have to go? You'd have to go 40, which would be two seconds. But you're gonna skate right through this person. Boom! Okay. Well, there's also there's also 60 feet over here. So how long does it take to go the hundred feet? five seconds, right? And then you need to go 60 more feet. How many more seconds is that? Three more seconds for a total of eight seconds. So two answers here, friends. It's going to be after two seconds and eight seconds. So the reason that there are two answers is because uh, distance isn't positive or negative. Distance is how far. Just like absolute value being distance from zero. Cool. So this is just like a little visual of why the absolute value is the absolute value. Let's refresh on these absolute value equations first. So I'm going to start like real nice and simple. The absolute value of x is 3. And so we're looking for values of x that would satisfy our equation. Nate, what values of x would satisfy this? I'm going to give you a hint. There's two of them. Um, would it be... Uh... 3 and negative 3? Yeah. 3 and x also equals negative 3 because the absolute value of both of those things is 3. Another way you might see it written is something like this. That's just saying a positive or a negative 3, right? You'll also see that with square roots, right? Because square roots have two answers, a positive and a negative. So I just want to start there so we're on the same page. We know that a positive 3 and a negative 3 both have the same absolute value of 3. They're both 3 away from 0, just like that person skating could be 60 feet away from the other individual more than one spot. Actually, now I'm thinking about it. If you're skating, you're going to be 60 feet away from that person in infinite spots if you skate a radius of 60. Ooh. We're dealing in a two-dimension here, but yeah. So this is going to be review as well. You had questions like this on a test, unit three, right? Where the absolute value of 2x minus 4 equals 7. I want us to take that same big idea approach. So don't even worry about like what x is, but whatever's in that absolute value can equal what two things? Whatever's in this whole thing can equal seven what? And seven and a negative seven, right? So that's going to set up two equations for us. Everybody on board with that? Because whatever the absolute value of seven is, is seven. The absolute value of negative seven is seven. So we can solve for x here. And I'm going to cruise through the solve for x thing because this is like not something new, right? Uh, five and a half, and then add four. Two x is negative three, so x is negative one and a half. Oh, that's kind of fun. I wrote one as a fraction and one as a decimal. Hopefully, nobody's a little OCD with that. But just a quick review, right? We have our two answers because the absolute value of the positive and the absolute value of the negative are the same. So we're going to transfer that knowledge to something that looks like this. The reason I wanted to review that is something like this. The absolute value, so if we have equations, we have any equations, right, any equals. The absolute value of x, it needs to be less than or equal to four. So a reference point is, what are our two reference points then? Four is the, right, absolute value of four is four, and negative, negative four. Yeah, well let's talk about that. Let's think about answers that work. What's an answer that the absolute value of it's less than 4? Let's think. So on all these, I start with answers that work and answers that don't work in my head. So, Grant. 
Four would work, right? Four is less than four, or less than or equal to. What about negative four? Does negative four work? Yeah, yeah because the absolute value of negative four is four, and four is equal to four. Okay, what are other answers? Five, does five work? Five isn't less than four, okay. Does three work? Yes, so this is gonna help me make my two inequalities. I know that x has to be less than or equal to four, but I know that x also has to be greater than or equal to negative four. Meaning like negative three, does that work? Yeah, the absolute value of negative three is three, which is less than four. Right, as soon as I were to get more negative than four, when I take the absolute value of a larger negative, like 8, negative 8, let's say, it won't satisfy this anymore, right? So do you see how I'm testing some answers to help me come up with my inequality? And that's really useful. Otherwise, you're just remembering how, remembering how to set something up. You can get an A on the test doing that, by the way. Proof. But I didn't understand why I did it. Test out a couple points. This works, this doesn't, all right? And here's what's cool. Once you get here, here's what... So, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1... Zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so if it has to be less than or equal to four, I'm solid there, right? And it has to be greater than or equal to negative four, solid there. And then everything in between. And after you get an answer on a number line for our inequalities, right, test it. Pick any point from this and see if it works. So let's pick zero. Is zero less than or equal to four, the absolute value of zero? Yeah, okay. Pick uh, negative two. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Is that less than or equal to 4? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Leah? On our test, if you do a test, if you have more than 8, like, written, would you make it a test? Yeah, I also, I actually, so for something like this, I actually appreciate this kind of view because I reasoned through writing this down. But this is the same thing as this, which we've seen before. It is a compound inequality. It is. I think it's easier to reason through with the word and when I'm trying to set up my 2. Um, but yeah, this is a compound inequality. These, this and this are the same thing. I like that you brought that up. I also want to show you a greater than situation, okay? So the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 2. So let's talk about some answers that work. Uh, let's go. Braden, give me an answer that would work to satisfy this inequality. Braden? I want an answer that would work to satisfy this inequality. Um, x is greater than or equal to 2. OK, I'm not looking to set up my 2 yet. I'm just looking for things that x could be right now. Oh, yeah. Um, 2. 2. 2 is equal to 2, right? And that means negative 2 would work. What's, what, what's another one, Sabine, that would work in here? Three would work, right? Three is greater than two. The absolute value of negative three is greater than two, okay? And then something that wouldn't work would be like uh, one. One's not greater than or equal to, which means the absolute value of negative one also is an answer. So let's use that to set it up. We, so we'll use that to set it up. We know that x needs to be greater than or equal to two. But x also could be less than or equal to negative two. And the reason we're going to need this or is something less than negative 2 would be one of those answers like negative 3 because the absolute value is going to turn that positive and the positive version needs to be larger, right? Are you guys seeing where I'm getting my two answers? Again, it's way easier if you test out some points, right? Because when I take the absolute value of that number, it becomes positive, right? Yeah. So I need negatives that have a larger absolute value than 2 so that when they become positive, it's greater than 2 to still satisfy my inequality. Oh, okay. But I wouldn't memorize switching signs. Do you see how I'm kind of approaching like what things would work and what things wouldn't work? Okay. So these are the things that would work. Any two are bigger, that's kind of like, yeah, that'll work because x needs to be larger than or equal to 2. But then, only things that are less than or equal to negative 2 would work because when they flip positive, they still need to satisfy my inequality. And what this does then on our number line, Okay, is it has to be greater than or equal to 2, that's going to send me right. Or less than or equal to negative 2, that's going to send me left. And really what this is doing is cutting out all those numbers between 2 and negative 2, which makes sense, right? Those would be less. So again, 
lean on that whole what, what answers are going to work and what answers aren't going to work. And I think it just helps you get your two inequalities. Because I, I know it's like a, my advice on these is like sometimes when you want to problem solve, you feel like do, 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 like do some stuff. I think some good advice to problem solve this stuff is like slow down and think it through before you do anything, right? Anybody else like to just do stuff? Like if it's not working or you don't know what to do, just do, do, do. Hope you hit something. I've been there. All right, so let's apply it to solving. So the absolute value of 2x plus 4 being greater than or equal to 5. So don't even worry about solving for x at all. What are some answers that our whole absolute value situation could equal to satisfy our inequality? Tyler? Six. six. If I got that whole thing to equal six, the absolute value of six is six, which is greater than or equal to five, which also means negative six works, right? Okay. So negative six also works. What's something that wouldn't work? Ezra? Two. So two is not greater than five. The absolute value of negative two is two, which is not greater than five. So thinking about what works and works, we know that x, well, we know that 2x plus 4, which is everything in that inequality, needs to be greater than or equal to 5. And what about in comparison to negative 5? Does it need to be bigger than negative 5 or less than negative 5? It has to be less than or equal to negative 5 because you're going to take that larger negative and the absolute value is going to make it positive, right, to be bigger. I know it's like the bigger negative is more positive. It's because you're doing that absolute value. I know it sounds a little silly. And again, that's why I like to start with like what kind of things will work and what kind of things won't work. So here's my two reference points, and either one of those will work, right? You could be five or bigger to satisfy this, or five or less to satisfy this, right? Then we're just going to start solving for x. 2x greater than or equal to 1. And I'm going to kind of cruise through this part because this is just isolating a variable. We've been doing that for a while. So divide by 2. Okay, so here's my two values, my two answers. Okay, x can be greater than or equal to half, or x can be less than or equal to negative 4 and 1 half. So if we're going to graph that on a line, I'm running out of space up there. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. So greater than or equal to 1 half, solid at 1 half to the right. Less than or equal to negative 4 and 1 half, so solid at negative 4 and 1 half. To the left, either one of those will satisfy. So again, here's another greater than. The greater thans pump out those ors. Right? The ors. Because to be bigger, you need a bigger negative or you need the bigger positive. Yeah. Right? So let's look at one more less than. N minus 1 is less than 2. Okay, so what are some answers for our absolute value? Not for N, but for the absolute value. Jack R, what's an answer for our absolute value that'll make this true? Um, Something less than 2. The absolute value of 3 is 3. So is 3 less than 2? Wait. Oh, wait, wait. I'm, I'm not looking for, like, a value of n. I'm looking for, like, the whole absolute value. What's, a, what's an absolute value of something that would be less than 2? Uh, you could do negative 1. Okay, yeah. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. That is less than 2. 1 as well, right? 1 works too. Are you guys seeing that? Zero also works. One and a half works. Negative one and a half works. So that's why we're going to get the compound inequality of n minus 1. It needs to be less than 2, but it also needs to be greater than negative 2. You guys see why it needs to be greater than negative 2? Because that's, that's like that possible answer negative 1 would fall in there. Okay? I wrote this one without the and. I wrote it as a compound just to show you. It's the same thing as... Uh, n minus 1 is less than 2, and n minus 1 is greater than negative 2. These are the same, all right? From here, though, here, here's kind of why I like writing like this. When I solve for n, look what I can do. I don't need to solve two things. I'm kind of just solving one thing. So n needs to stay less than 3, but greater than negative 1 to satisfy my inequality. And on a number line, what that looks like is... open on negative 1, open on 3, and to be everything in between. You can always check your answer. Pull, let's pull something from the graph. 0. Does 0 work? Is 0 less than 3 but more than negative 1? Yeah. So for n minus, let's pull it for the n minus 1. I throw 0 all the way up here. 
So is zero minus one is negative one. The absolute value of negative one is one. Is that less than two? Yeah. So again, my advice, instead of memorizing, uh, if it's less than, do the and. If it's greater than, do the or. If you like Google it, you'll see stuff like that. It's, it's true. But I think you can use reason to make the and and or happen to where you're never going to mess up that rule. Could you see how people mess up that rule with their symbols and stuff? I would just try to build two inequalities that are going to make things true that you can just like say like these things would be true.